أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين الهي امين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ان شاء الله i welcome all of you to our second episode of our blessed home series and this episode is going to be about healthy habits inshallah so let's begin Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the following hadith, Al-mu'minu al-qadiyu khayrun wa ahabu ila Allahi min al-mu'min al-da'if. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A strong believer is better and is more lovable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than a weak believer. Which means who is better, what kind of a Muslim is better, what kind of a believer has um, is better in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is strong, the one who has more strength. Now, subhanAllah, when we talk about strength, of course, strength does not only mean that um, it's only talking about physical strength, right? Um, so let's analyze what are all the things that give us strength. So first of all, number one, Iman gives us strength right? Faith gives us strength. Number two, our healthy physique, it also gives us more strength. So healthy physique, our physical health also gives us more strength. What else gives us more strength? Um, our mental health. If we are healthy psychologically, if we have a good mental health, then that is also a criteria which depends on strength right? So subhanAllah, there are multiple factors that depends on strength. So basically, we're going to target these three. So these are the three things which give us strength. What did we say? Iman, physical health, and mental health, which means that if we do not hold on to faith, if we do not hold on to Iman, then we will be considered a weak believer, right? Perhaps you can tell me that, alhamdulillah, I, I pray five times a day. I fast. I give charity. So I am a strong believer because I'm very good in terms of my faith. But then you complain about body aches all the time. You complain about muscle aches all the time. You complain about migraines all the time. And these factors become a hindrance for you to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These factors, they become a hindrance for you to serve humanity. So you feel that you are a strong believer, but the fact of the matter is that if we are not healthy, we're not able to achieve wonders. So what happens if you are not healthy, even though that you have a lot of stamina, a lot of passion to stand in Qiyam and prolong your Qiyam, but what happens? Your back starts hurting. Even though you're so passionate about helping out other people, but the moment we are called to volunteer in the masjid, we're unable to do so because we're suffering from migraines, because our body is hurting. We're suffering from body aches, right? So that's why in order to be eligible, to be a strong believer, we all need to be healthy. So just keep this hadith in mind throughout this session as we go along that the Prophet Sallallahu said, who is better? The strong believer is more beloved to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala than the weak believer. Okay, so keep this hadith in mind. Now let us look at the first revelations that was given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After Surah Alaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surat Mudathir, which means this is amongst the first revelations that were given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca. And amongst the first revelation, something that is given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it definitely has to be very important, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose it to be the first lesson, amongst the first lessons to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the first five ayat of Surat Alaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surat Muddasir. And what is mentioned in this lesson of Surat Muddasir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number three, glorify your Lord. 
purify your clothing and avoid uncleanliness. So keep this in mind. And subhanAllah, this is important for us to discuss. Why so? Because during the onset of COVID-19, let us acknowledge that we all become more conscious about our hygiene, right? Throughout the day, we were being educated regarding the importance of sanitizing ourselves. We were educated about the importance of sanitizing the space around us, our surroundings. And when we look at our theme, Islam has emphasized a lot on personal hygiene. Islam has emphasized a lot by explaining its worldly and spiritual benefits. Like for instance, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At-tahuru shatrul iman. Cleanliness is a part of faith. So meaning what? That when we keep ourselves and our surroundings clean, this is actually a pillar of faith. It is a part of faith, which means by keeping ourselves and our surroundings clean, we are strengthening our faith. So now the ayah of the Quran clearly tells us that we have to avoid uncleanliness. And the hadith tells us that cleanliness is a part of faith. So all that tells us that this is something we really need to work on. We really need to strive for. So first and foremost, before we start working on our ibadah, before we start targeting on certain habits and other aspects of life, let us target some healthy habits, okay? So let us start with the formulation of healthy habits. How do we adopt them? Many a times when we talk of healthy, um, uh, when we talk about habit form, uh, formation, we always start with, I cannot do it. I can't do it, right? Because changing a certain habit is extremely difficult. It's not hard. For instance, if a person has the habit to sleep after Fajr, it's very difficult for them to actually let go of that habit of sleeping after Fajr, right? If someone has a habit to eat a lot of junk food, to cut that habit and to start eating healthy, of course, is not easy. If someone has the habit of just, um, you know, not working out, again, to have that kind of lifestyle and to change that uh, sedentary lifestyle, to change that, it's very hard, right? So changing any kind of habit is definitely not an easy task. It's definitely difficult. But before shaitan tells us, you cannot do it. Before you yourself and your nafs tell you, you cannot do it. Just tell yourself, I can do this. I can do it. And inshallah, I'm going to work for it. So inshallah, with this positivity and passion, inshallah, you can start targeting your habits. So first and foremost, inshallah, we're gonna start with dental hygiene. So after we wake up, once we have recited the morning dua, what is the morning dua? Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhin nushur, right? Once you have recited that, you get up and on autopilot, we use the restroom and we brush our teeth. Did we ever give it a thought, why do we do that? For instance, we're recommended to brush our teeth twice a day to prevent ourselves from bad breath, bacteria, plaque, etc. But many a time as youth, we tend to sweep it under the rug thinking, um, it's okay, what's wrong if I skip brushing my teeth for a day or two? It's not the end of the world. It's okay. Who cares? It's fine. SubhanAllah, when we look at the sunnah of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to keep his miswak, his siwak stick, the toothbrush of the olden times. He used to keep that with him all the time. Rasulullah SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if I had not found it hard for my followers or the people, I would have ordered them to clean their teeth with the siwak for every prayer meaning five times a day. Imagine if the doctors recommend us 
to brush our teeth twice a day. How beautiful and radiant our teeth are going to turn out if we follow the prophetic advice of using it five times a day, every time before we pray salah, right? Subhanallah. So doctors recommend that we should brush our teeth for at least two minutes to ensure that each and every tooth has been targeted well, and there are not any missing points. And of course, when you go out in markets, there are tongue cleaners that we can use to clean our tongue because at times there's this white layer which is formed on our tongue, which actually looks very disgusting to others. It looks very disturbing when we talk to others, right? When we talk to other people. So we should try to clean our tongues as well. And why are we talking about all this? Because this was our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who made sure that whenever he recited the Quran, his mouth doesn't have an order to it. Whenever he communicated with the angels, his breath was fresh. And whenever he had a conversation with people, they were not harmed by him unintentionally. So subhanAllah, this was the norm of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would use the Sivak stick multiple times throughout the day. One time, someone asked the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha radiallahu anha. Someone asked her, what was the first thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did when he entered his house? Meaning as soon as he would enter his house, meaning he came from work, he came from uh, teaching, preaching, um, leading salah in the masjid. What was the first thing that he did as soon as he entered his home? And what did Aisha radiallahu anha respond? She did not say, oh, the first thing he did was going on his cell phone. The first thing he did was recline on his couch and start using his tablet, start watching on his iPad. No, what did she say? Aisha radiallahu anha said, he used his tooth stick. The first thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did as soon as he entered his house was to use his toothbrush. SubhanAllah. This was how much particular Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was about his dental hygiene. He did not even want to harm his family members as well. SubhanAllah. So we have to make sure that the people who live around us, they're not harmed by us, right? We have to make sure that the surroundings that we live in, we're not harming that. And we have to make sure that we are staying clean because we want to stay healthy. That's the reason why we're talking about dental hygiene because we want to stay healthy and fit. And we want to groom ourselves as healthy Muslims, as strong Muslims, inshallah. Another habit that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam incorporated regularly was taking care of his hair. He would oil them often, wash them and make sure, and made sure that they were neat and tidy. And subhanAllah, when we talk about hair health, many a times we often feel grossed out thinking about oiling our hair, especially youth, right? They feel, oh my God, oh no, we're gonna smell bad. Our hair are gonna smell bad. And I don't like that sticky feeling of hair clumping together, sticking together. So what do we do? We often ignore it. We often delay it, or we often procrastinate. However, studies show multiple benefits of oiling hair regularly. For instance, oiling our hair hydrates our hair. It prevents hair falling. And different oils consists of different um, vitamins which are essential for healthy growth. For instance, um, almond oil has vitamin B, K and E, whereas olive oil has vitamin B12, uh, B6, B3, and vitamin K as well as E, vitamin E. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ used often. Uh, what was it? It was olive oil. So inshallah, we should try to incorporate that habit that just like the Prophet ﷺ would often use olive oil 
to oil his hair, inshallah, we should try to do that as well. And these are all essential for hair maintenance because of the deterioration our hair goes through when it is exposed to different types of elements, right? And when we oil our hair, subhanAllah, it also prevents lice, dandruff, antifungal infections, and so much more. SubhanAllah, no matter how gross feeling you get when you oil your hair, SubhanAllah, there are multiple benefits to it. So studies say that oiling our hair overnight and washing, washing it off the next day and staying consistent on this habit at least twice a week, at least twice a week provides beneficial results. So it's definitely worth it because that's not something I am saying or I'm coming up with. This is something which has been proven by studies. And when we think about prophets or pious people, many a times the picture that we sketch in our minds, we have this perception of ascetism about them that makes us think that the prophets and all the righteous people, they somehow never cared about themselves. They somehow never cared about self-grooming. All they did was pray and fast 24 seven, right? That's the picture that we sketch in our mind. But SubhanAllah, when we look at the example of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam, we realize how important self-grooming is because we realize that in order to be productive in our lives, we have to take care of our body. In order to worship Allah and serve humanity better, we have to stay healthy. And in order to stay healthy and fit, we have to fulfill the rights of our body. And when we look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would also perfume his hair. Yeah, he would also perfume his hair with any beautiful scent which was available. And now, subhanAllah, we have shampoos that actually fulfill that duty for us. They fulfill that purpose for us. So we don't have to do something about that. And many a times, we as girls, when we start wearing hijab, we tend to wear hijab all the time, right? So this is also something that we need to address, that when we start wearing hijab, we just wear it all the time. Why? Because we just feel comfortable in it. So we wear hijab at school, we wear hijab at home, we wear hijab while going to sleep, we have our hijab when we wake up. And what do we do by that? We do not let our hair breathe in any oxygen. The hair is not getting any air. Now this is another extreme. Yes, hijab is fard in Islam. It's obligatory in Islam. And we must cover our hair in gatherings that comprise of non-mahram men. But that doesn't mean that we have to keep our head covered in front of our father. That doesn't mean that we have to keep our head covered in front of our brother, our husband, our grandfather, etc. Right? So let us be careful about that too. Let us be mindful about that too. And mashallah, when I look at girls, subhanAllah, who have started wearing hijab, definitely it's, it's worth applauding um, the girls who have started wearing hijab as soon as they hit puberty. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, good for them. Very, very well done, MashaAllah. Because now we know scientifically that when we cover our head, it keeps our hair pollution free. Also, it protects our hair from dust and direct exposure to sunlight that may damage our hair. And medical tests show that 40 to 60% heat is lost through the head. So wearing a head covering in cold months is actually very important from the health perspective. So wearing hijab protects the heat from the body from getting lost, from being lost. So mashallah, it has a lot of spiritual benefits. It has multiple scientific benefits as well. And that has now been proven um, due to science, due to research. However, just like our skin, our hair needs oxygen and nutrients as well. So when we are at home 
and we have the option to take off our hijab, then we should. So that our hair can get some oxygen, inshallah. Our hair can get some nutrients, inshallah. So these are simple habits that we can formulate in order to stay healthy. Many a times, another thing that is often noted is that our hair rarely get the privilege of getting combed, subhanAllah. Especially, it's true for a lot of people who wear hijab. Why? Because we're in a hijab all the time, right? So the hair never get the privilege. They never get the honor of getting combed. SubhanAllah, this is another habit that we need to fix, another habit that we need to form, that we need to take care of our hair. We need to comb our hair. We need to brush our hair regularly. One time, Rasulullah saw an unkempt man with disheveled hair. And Rasulullah said, couldn't this man find anything to groom his hair? Meaning, couldn't this man find any comb to brush his hair? Why is he like that? SubhanAllah, what do we learn from here? That this is Islam. Islam doesn't mean that because we have now become more religious, more pious, now we do not take care of our body anymore. We do not take care of our health anymore. We do not groom ourselves. This is not right. But what is Islam rather? That we take care of ourselves and our appearance because it has a direct effect on us and our surroundings. So let us talk about the benefits of this. What is the benefit of combing our hair, brushing our hair? So when our hair are combed properly and regularly, at least once a day, what will happen? As a result of it, they will tend to have less knots, right? On the contrary, if we do not comb our hair regularly, there are going to be more knots. And as a result of more knots, the process of combing hair next time will be more painful. It's going to be more agonizing, which can lead us towards headaches, right? Which can lead us towards body aches. So keeping our hair nice and tidy every day is a sign of a healthy Muslim. Plus, of course, when you brush your hair, when you comb your hair, it adds to an overall clean and tidy appearance. Alhamdulillah, right? So inshallah, let us do that. The first thing in the morning after we have, uh, you know, uh, brushed our teeth and gotten out of the restroom, we should comb our hair, brush our hair. And then if we're going out for school, we can put on our hijab and go inshallah. So another important thing is, that when we choose to comb our hair, let us pay attention to the fact, what is the place where I choose to comb my hair? Is it just anywhere in the house? Is it just anywhere in my bedroom? Because if that's the case, then this is another habit that needs to be fixed, right? So let us try to choose a specific place of the house to do that most often a non-carpeted area. Now, why is this important? Because many a times while brushing our hair, it's common to see a lot of hair falling on the ground. It's common to see a lot of hair falling on the carpet. So if we make sure to brush our hair in one specific area of the house, in the bedroom, in a non-carpeted area, Insha'Allah, we will be able to keep our surroundings clean. And once we're done combing our hair, we can use a wet paper towel in order to gather all the fallen hair on the ground and just throw them in the trash can. This will make sure that, Insha'Allah, next time when your friends come to visit you for a play date, they come to see you in your house, they will not see hair on the couch on your bed, on your study table, and several areas of your bedroom, right? Because alhamdulillah, you have already taken care of it. Alhamdulillah, we have already taken care of it. And to tell you the truth, if we make this simple effort just to 
gather all the hair and then trash them. SubhanAllah, if we make this simple, tiny effort every single day, honestly speaking, our vacuum cleaners are going to thank you for that. SubhanAllah, they are going to honestly thank you for that wholeheartedly because they were exhausted of picking up all the hair from different parts of our house. So this will serve as an environmental friendly technique as well, inshallah. So let us try to do that. Also a side point, a lot of girls, they like to keep their hair open, right? And it's fine if you like to do that. But one reminder for us is that if we're planning to cook something, if we are planning to prepare some meal for someone, it's always best to tie our hair into a French bun or make a ponytail or braid your hair. It's always best to do that. Because, you know, as the girls, a lot of girls, they like cooking, especially baking, right? They love to bake. And mashallah, there are, are lots of summer camps that are going on these days for that purpose. A lot of baking camps that are going on during this time, summer break. So this is one tip to remember for life. What is that tip? That if we are preparing our food, it's always best to wear the right attire. To do what? To tie our hair properly or wear hair restraints in order to prevent hair from falling into the food. And that's one wisdom. That's one reason why chefs wear chef hats, honestly, because they want to prevent hair from falling in and getting into the food. So now the question comes up is, you might be wondering, why are we learning all this, right? <laughs> because this is not a cooking class, definitely. This is not a baking class either. So why are we learning all this? What's the purpose to know all this? And the purpose is, that we all have to grow up to become strong Muslimas. The kind of Muslims who inspire themselves and others. The kind of Muslims who take care of themselves and other people's safety. And honestly speaking, no one likes to eat food that has hair fallen in it, right? So we should try our best not to harm anyone. And there's a hadith as well for that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, la barara wa la birar. Do not cause harm or return harm. Such a beautiful piece of advice, isn't it? SubhanAllah. Do not cause harm or return harm. So over here, we're talking about not causing harm intentionally or unintentionally. And the other part of hadith is, do not even return harm. Meaning, subhanAllah, if your sister baked something and there was hair fallen in it. So in order to return that harm, do not purposefully do that in order to take revenge, right? Or if you accidentally got knocked over because of her, again, do not try to intentionally harm her, hurt her in order to take revenge, subhanAllah. That tells us that our deen is so beautiful, right? Islam is based upon forgiveness, forgiving others, and letting it go. Now, when we're talking about these things, these nitty gritty things, subhanAllah, do this, do not do this, it comes to our mind, subhanAllah, that there are so many tiny, teeny tips which are incorporated in our deen essentials to live our life. And if you think about it, who explains all this information in so much detail? Who tells you, do this, do that, you know, wash your hands before eating, do not stand and eat, do not stand and drink water. Who tells you all these simple nitty gritty stuff? Our parents, right? Our parents tell us all this nitty gritty stuff, all this tiny, bits of information. No one else do that, right? And why do our parents tell you? Uh, why do our parents tell us that? Because they love us. They want us to excel. They want us to succeed. 
that's why our parents tell us from the day we were born and as we grow up, no matter what part of age we are, they keep on telling us, teaching us, disciplining us. Why? Not because they are our enemies, but because they love us. Because they wish for us to succeed in all aspects of life. And the question is, who loves us more than our parents? Who loves us even more than our parents? And the answer to that is our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He loves us more than any human on the face of the earth. And because he loves us so much, he has given us simple guidelines, prophetic lifestyle, that has the key to unlock the success of dunya as well as the success of hereafter. Subhanallah. Because all the things that we're talking about here, we are talking about them in reference to the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So this tells us what? That we should never feel that the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a burden for us. We should never feel that way. Rather, we should consider it as a blessing. That Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to us to teach us. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to me to guide me. Otherwise, I would have been doomed, right? Otherwise, we would have been doomed altogether. So Alhamdulillah, for this blessing, for the blessing of Sunnah, for the blessing of Quran. And that's the reason why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Jannatul Firdaus. Amen. Now, after we have spoken about our hair, that we have to take care of our health, we need to oil them properly, we need to brush them every single day, we have to make sure that our hair gets some oxygen, we make sure that we brush our hair in a specific area of our house so that we are keeping our environment clean, we're making sure that while we are cooking or baking, we have our hair tied up. SubhanAllah, after we have spoken about all that, and we are now taking care of our health. Another aspect that truly needs our attention is the faculty of our eyes. So we need to ask ourselves, am I taking care of my eyes? Because again, remind yourself with the prophetic hadith that a qawi mu'min, a strong mu'min is the one who is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we all want to be a qawi mu'min. We all want to be a strong mu'min. And we want to be from the beloved people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in order to be strong, we need to stay healthy. And in order to be healthy, we need to target all these specific areas of our body and take care of them. So another faculty that truly needs our attention are our eyes. SubhanAllah, they are the gateways through which we access the world around us. They are a special gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to take care of them as well. SubhanAllah, when we talk about eyes, SubhanAllah, there are so many things actually to talk about eyes. Our eyes, for instance, they have a resolution of 576 megapixels. Compare that with one of the most professional cameras around us today. They have around 20 plus megapixel resolution. SubhanAllah. So compare a professional camera having a resolution of 20 plus megapixel, compare that with the eye that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us which consists of 576 megapixel resolution, subhanAllah. That's the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is much more advanced than any human creation. But at times we become very negligent about this blessing. We become very careless in terms of its care. So what do we do? If we have the habit of reading, we expose ourselves to very dim light while we read. Or 
if we're watching something, subhanAllah, we watch TV or we watch shows so much excessively for multiple hours a day that we harm this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unintentionally. And as a result of it, we get poor eyesight. But many a time, subhanAllah, the reason for poor eyesight is not environmental factors, but the reason is genetics. And subhanAllah, it is true that if you have gotten glasses or if you wear contacts, the sole reason is not because of your mistakes. Genetics play a big role as well. So if your parents or one of your parents have poor eyesight, automatically, naturally, you may have it too. Not necessarily, but generally, you can have it, right? And due to which you are forced to wear glasses or due to which you are forced to wear contacts. And many a times as youth, we are very careless in this regard. So if we choose to use contacts, then it definitely comes with a lot of heavy lifting of responsibility. Because when we wear contacts, there is a high risk of bacterial infections. Um, infections can be actually caused by prolonged wear, buildup bacteria, neglectful care, or sleeping with contacts on. And many a time we do make this mistake that we just sleep with our contact lenses, which is actually not something which is recommended by doctors. And subhanAllah, a study showed that two thirds of contact lens wearers in the world are females. So as a student of this class, if we have chosen to take this decision to wear a contact lens, then let's be very careful about it, okay? Use it carefully by cleaning them properly and never sleeping with them. Because in the long run, it can be very detrimental for us. And why are we talking about this? Because we have to take utmost care of our eyes to see the world around us. Why is it important? Because when we use the faculty of our eyes, we are able to appreciate the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala around us. Eyes are the source for us to meet and greet people so that we can see them, talk to them, and address them, right? Through our eyes, we are able to learn the different sciences of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created. And if we use our eyes, we are able to serve humanity by leading an excellent example of being a Muslim scientist, a Muslim doctor, Muslim astronomer, etc. And for all these sciences, our eyes play a big role. And most importantly, we definitely do not wish to be deprived of seeing the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not wish to be deprived from being able to recite the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not wish to be deprived from studying the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to learn it and preach it, right? So that's the reason why our eyes are very, very important. And we have to take care of them because this is something we need it all the time. And many a times we often use the quote, when there is a will, there is a way. So in history, we do see a lot of Muslim scholars who managed to achieve more than us, despite the fact that they were blind, despite the fact that they were unable to see. But again, subhanAllah, let us not forget that as Muslims, we need to try our best to protect ourselves from harm. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destines for us some calamity, then inshallah, we stay patient and we try our best. But as students, as teachers, as humans, as Muslims, we have to take care of our health. And we have to take care of these different areas of our health 
different body parts so that we can worship Allah in a better manner and we're able to serve humanity in a better fashion, inshallah. So another important thing, subhanAllah, again, thanks to the onset of COVID-19, subhanAllah, the whole world started online learning, right? Online learning became common and all of us, subhanAllah, started using it. Either we were online learners or we were online teachers. So if we are teachers or students who are working online, or we are moms or dads who work in IT and we have to deal with looking at the computers for a prolonged time. Again, how can we protect the health of our eyes? The doctors recommend the 20-20-20 rule. And what is the 20-20-20 rule? To take breaks from screen use every 20 minutes. Okay, so whatever assignment that we're working on, whatever project that we are dealing with, take a break after every 20 minutes. And when we take a break, what do we do? We focus on something which is 20 feet away. So move your eyes and look at something which is 20 feet away from you. Okay, about six meters away from you. And then when you look at something 20 feet away from you, look at that thing for 20 seconds. Okay, 20 seconds. And inshallah, then you can, again, go back to your project, go back to your assignment and start working. But by doing this, what's the benefit? Inshallah, we will be able to take care of our eyes health. And one of the ways to improve our eye health is by using kuhul. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of your kuhul is antimony for it makes the vision clear. And this is a hadith of Abu Dawud. And many Muslims actually around the world, they use kuhul and they have seen many efficacious results. But in case if you're allergic to it, then please ask your doctor before using it, inshallah. So what do we learn here? That no matter what, precaution is better than cure. So let's thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these faculties and take care of them and use them to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever manner that we can. And if we do these simple day-to-day -day actions following the prophetic advice, then these simple things that you're doing, taking care of your eyes, brushing your teeth, taking care of your hair, combing your hair, these simple actions, they can actually become a means of reward for us on the day of Qiyamah. Why is that so? Because what matters is your intention. Why did you do something and what did you do it for? Who did you do it for? So let's question ourselves. Why are we doing something and what we are doing? How are we doing it? And what are we doing it for? Whose sake are we doing it for? So this is something very, very important. So let us all try to be strong Muslims and take care of our health because if we are healthy, then inshallah, we will be able to become doctors, engineers, teachers, pioneers of the community, inshallah, right? But if we are suffering from migraines at a very young age. We are diagnosed with the step two diabetes at a very early age. Then what are we gonna do? How are we gonna serve humanity later on? How are we gonna worship Allah later on, right? So we need to stay healthy. We need to stay strong and inshallah try our best. SubhanAllah, just imagine each time when we recite the Quran, or when we study the Quran, or when we teach the Quran, what happens? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that the malaika, the angels envelop us with their wings and they accompany us in our gathering. So the simple tip that we discussed today to try to brush our teeth multiple times a day, like how the Prophet used to do five times a day before every prayer. SubhanAllah, if 
you're not able to do that, just try your best to do how much you can, two times a day, three times a day. Just think about it. That if you are with an angel right now, because you are studying the Quran, if an angel is right next to you because you are studying the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, just think about it. Do you wish to face the angel with a beautiful fragrance? Yes, we do. Do you wish to face the angel with a neat attire? Yes, definitely. We all want to do that, right? So let's make sure that we take care of our dental hygiene in order to be harm free for others, whether it's the maraika, whether it's our family or the friends around us. Let us be a source of pleasure for them, right? Let us try to stay clean and stay healthy so that inshallah we are able to take care of ourselves and help the people around us, take care of the people around us. Insha'Allah. So with that said, insha'Allah, we're going to conclude our session. And we have 10 minutes left. So insha'Allah, I would like to take your suggestions in the chat screen, insha'Allah, once I end the recording and ask you for suggestions so that it can help me learn from you. And insha'Allah, it can benefit all of us as a group of students and as a group of Muslims together, insha'Allah. Okay? So stay tuned. Do not exit the class. Let us conclude our session for today. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka, 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 wa natubu ilayk. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Allahumma anis wahshati fi qabri. Allahumma arhamni bil Qur'an al-Azim. Waj'alhu li imama wa nuran wa hudan wa rahma. Allahumma dhakkirni minhuma nasib. Wa allimni min هما جهلت وارزقني تلاوته آنا الليل وآنا النهار وجعله لي حجة يا رب العالمين آمين سمامين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق>